Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin. We're gonna be looking at the risk metric of Bitcoin, which takes into account diminishing returns and lengthening cycles. And we're going to, to back test this in a sense. We're gonna to look to see how much Bitcoin you could have accumulated had you accumulated dynamically. So dynamically dollar cost averaging, or had you just done it statically. So ultimately putting in the same amount of money over the course of several years, but just by timing it based on the risk metric, we'll see how you would have performed. So if you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on so you can get notified of future videos, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. You can see we have just over 3,400 members. Finally, if you like the content a lot and you wanna see more of it, we do have a premium list. You can find access to this at intothecryptoverse.com where you'll get a premium report every single week as well as a premium video and a few other things. So if you're unfamiliar with the risk metric, I made it for Bitcoin. It essentially takes into account diminishing returns and lengthening cycles to try to help people identify better uh, when, you know, when the risk on purchasing Bitcoin is lower and when it is higher. So by doing this in a, in a manner that uh, associates time with diminishing returns, it will hopefully better allow us to identify the next speculative bubble top. Um, you can see currently where the risk level is. It's you know in this light blue region. Personally, I buy up to a risk region of 0.5, um, but we have all sorts of different tiers in terms of like what tier or what risk tier that you would want to buy to based on your own risk risk tolerance. So this is this is essentially what it is. This is the price of Bitcoin on the y-axis. The risk metric is just color coded in um, and it goes from zero to one. So if it's zero, it's historically a really good time to buy. And if it's one, it's historically a really good time to sell. This way, when, when you see these capitulations happen, like happened in earlier March, you say, oh, we hardly ever spend time in this dark blue region where the risk is this low this is the time to purchase Bitcoin based on historical patterns, okay? If you take the risk metric out of it, um, out of the color, and then just add it on the secondary y-axis, this is what it looks like. So you can look at it numerically and get a feel for, for where the bear markets bottom and where the speculative bubbles peak. Um, this is the whole idea. So for me, I personally stopped buying Bitcoin at a risk level of approximately 0.5 uh, and, and would start selling above this region. And this way, this would have allowed you to take profits back in 2019 when the risk got above um, uh, 0.6 or so. So the question, right, is, well, how do you dynamically DCA? And we've said, you know, you can do this by say, figuring out what your base X is. And if, the, if X is the amount of money you're putting in, say every seven days, then you need to accommodate for the fact that if the risk drops, which at some point it will, you could then put in more to help lower your weighted risk profile because you want to get your risk down. And when the price is dropping and the risk is dropping, you can accumulate a lot more Bitcoin in the short term compared to what you could have accumulated otherwise. So the question here, and we're going to go through this systematically year by year, starting in 2011. So in 2011, it starts in like later in the year, just because that's when I have price data uh, starting. I think it's... Um, uh, sometime in the in the third quarter, uh, but then every subsequent year after this that I'll show you is starting on the first day of the year. So January 1st of every single year, and we're going to go through how much Bitcoin would you have accumulated had you dynamically dollar cost averaged or had you statically dollar cost averaged and statically just means you're just putting in the same amount every given interval. So first, we're gonna look at static DCA not using the risk metric. So this is basically like, you don't care what the price of Bitcoin is, you're just putting it in, you're putting in 100 bucks a week, 200 bucks a week, whatever it might be. And then the red is dynamically DCA and using the risk metric. So this means you don't put money in when the risk is above 0.5. So ultimately, you're, you're putting in the same amount of money over time, so I made sure that it's you're, you're putting in the same amount let's see how much more Bitcoin you would have accumulated. Uh, first, I just wanna overlay the risk metric so you can see um, the, the dynamic DCA is going sideways during this time because as I said, when the risk is above 0.5, no money is going in. So this is the total amount of Bitcoin you would have accumulated since 2011. If your X value, so I should say this, if X 
is 100. So your baseline is 100, meaning that if the risk gets between 0 and 0.1, then you'd be putting in 500 that week. So you have to, you have to figure out what your x can be such that you're able to do something like that. Had you done this, you would have accumulated, if you had done it dynamically, you would have accumulated 5,003 Bitcoin over the course of the last uh, 9, 10 years or so. Had you done it statically, you would have accumulated 2,817 Bitcoin. This is a difference of 2,186 Bitcoin. And at today's prices, which I know $9,000 per Bitcoin is slightly higher than what the price currently is at the time of this video, the difference in what you would have made would have been $19,674,000 using dynamic DCA. Now, a lot of times I'll say, you know, what's a few K among friends and whatnot, but I mean, among friends, 2,186 Bitcoin is a lot among friends. I think, I think we can agree to that. Um, let's, let's continue marching uh, through this because I, I want to cover a lot of stuff. So in this one, you know, some people might say, well, Ben, this isn't fair. You're, you're, you're comparing a strategy that's only buying when the risk is low to a strategy that's putting in the same amount, but also when the risk is higher. So what happens if the person doing it statically is, putting in, is only putting in money when the risk is below 0.5, but because they're doing it only below 0.5, they can afford to put in more. So ultimately, you're still, you're still putting in the same amount over time. Um, so this is, this is not using the risk metric. And then now, the yellow is also going flat when it's above 0.5, but because we're not putting in money then, it allows us to put more money in when the risk is lower. So ultimately, we're putting in the same amount of money over time. In this case, it's almost $100,000 had your X value uh, for the dynamic DCA, if it had been $100 per week, so then it could have gone up to, but no more than $500 per week. In this case, you would have accumulated 1626 more Bitcoin, so $14,633,000 more in value at today's prices, despite the fact that you would have put in the same amount of money, around $95,000, $96,000. Um, now we're going to start going through each year. So this year is 2012. So you can see in the same manner, uh, we're putting in the same amount of money over time because this goes to the same value. But you can see that when the risk goes down, the dynamic DCA approach, we're putting in more money. So here you can see we've put in $30,000, whereas with static DCA at this point, we would have only put in say like twenty-two dollars or $23,000. Because of that, the amount of Bitcoin being accumulated goes up. So had you started in 2012, you'd be sitting at almost 120 Bitcoin versus 100 Bitcoin had you done it or had you done it statically. And a lot of people here are wondering, well, you know, if I started buying Bitcoin in 2011, 2012, I sure, you know, I would not be watching this video, of course. I'd be, um, you know, sitting on my private island somewhere and <laughs> enjoying myself. Um, so let's actually get into more realistic uh, time frame. So a lot of people got into the market in 2013. Um, this is when you know Bitcoin had its had a, a speculative bubble top, and where it was really starting to get um, uh, more well known uh, was in 2013. So the same approach: dynamic DCA using the risk metric, and then uh, static DCA using the risk metric, where our X value is $100. Um, so we're keeping all of that the same, and this is investing every seven days. So you, you're still putting in the same amount of money. Um, you can see here it would have corresponded to around $70,000 over the last eight years. And uh, surprisingly, in this situation, um, you would, you know, you would, your, your current number of Bitcoin would still be about the same had you done either approach. And it's interesting, and I think it's it's not hard to understand why. It's because if you were putting in money. In, in 2013, this is when Bitcoin was going parabolic. And it never returned to those low values that it was before it went parabolic. Um, so, you know, the low, the, 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 the low in the next bear market was higher than the accumulation phase of the cycle before it. So for a few years, you know, you would have had more Bitcoin had you just done it statically. But you can see that once we got into a bear market, the dynamic DCA approach allowed you to accumulate Bitcoin faster. And in fact, if you look here, I mean, there's almost um, the person who was statically DCAing in late 2013 would have had almost 25 more Bitcoin. Um, but 
even if they hadn't sold and they just held and they continue using this approach, then eventually the dynamic DCA approach would have, al would have allowed you to accumulate more Bitcoin. So it's going through those market cycles um, and going through those really low risk regi regimes that allow you to get that extra Bitcoin. And now they're, they're fairly close together just because it's hard to accumulate a lot of Bitcoin at $100 a week because of the price of Bitcoin. I mean, I probably should put this on a logarithmic scale so you can see. Um, but ultimately, you know, you're, you're talking about just a few Bitcoin difference between um, the two approaches. But again, this could change you know, as we if, if if we see if we see prices continue to drop in the short term, then obviously the dynamic DCA approach will kick in. People will be putting in more who are following this approach. Let's look at 2014. So 2014 is a is a good instance where had you done it during, say, a bear market or accumulation phase, the dynamic DCA would have worked out because you can see over the course of several years through this accumulation period, you were putting in more. And then later on, you were putting in less. And had you done this, you would be sitting on 120 Bitcoin today versus 100 Bitcoin had you done it statically. 2015 is a similar story. You'd be putting in more early on because the risk levels were low. You know, you can see the risk levels were between like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 accumulating more Bitcoin. And then if you look at the chart again, here you can see uh, statically dynamic or statically DCA and you would have been at a little over 70, maybe 74 Bitcoin at current at, at the present day. Had you done it dynamically, you'd be sitting at around 90 Bitcoin present day. So this is a, a good approach in my opinion, if you're going to follow it for years, if you're just going to follow it for a few weeks and then FOMO into the market, then you know this clearly this approach isn't isn't for you. Um, now we're going to get into the two cases, two cases where you would have actually been better off, even present day, statically DCAing. But before, before I show you this, I just want to remind you that if you guys like the content, we're going to be looking at other, in, other types of, 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 of this metric based on like frequency of DCAing, like every week, every two weeks, every 30 days, um, what tends to work out. But if you want to look at that, then I would encourage you to check out the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com. You'll get a weekly report as well as a weekly premium video and access to a dashboard that has the live risk levels so that you can use that appropriately depending on your, your um, window of investment, your time intervals. If you want to join and you want a discount, uh, you can pay with cryptocurrency for six or 12 months. And if you do that, you'll get either a five or 10% discount. If you, if you pay for 12 months, I think it's a little bit more than a 10% discount. Um, so I'd love to have you uh, join the premium list. Um, so I'll see you guys there. Uh, but let's get back to, to what we were talking about. So here we're looking at the two years um, since the history of Bitcoin, where at present day, you would have been better off statically DCA. One of them is if you had started in 2016. The other one is if you had started in 2017. Well, why is this? Well, it's the same reason as 2013, okay? If you start investing in a bull market, it's better to just get your money in because if prices are going up more or less monotonically and you're waiting for the risk level to go down and it never does, then you would have been better off just putting the money in, um, even in say like a lump sum type of investment or just uh, DCAing regularly. Obviously, if, if the static DCA approach is better than the dynamic DCA approach, then what would have even been better than the static DCA approach would have just been a lump sum, most likely because you would have just been putting the money into the market and then Bitcoin would have gone parabolic, okay? So if Bitcoin's going parabolic, then obviously in the short term, dynamic DCA, this is a shortcoming of it. But if I'll remind you, if you go back to 2013, originally doing it um, statically would have been better, but it only took, you know, it, it only took a few more years before the dynamic approach took over. So here's 2016, you can see that um, you were only really getting into more money doing it dynamically um, uh, until 2019 because the risk levels were just so much higher. Uh, and therefore, you would have accumulated just a few more Bitcoin. So instead of having 25 Bitcoin statically, had you done it dynamically, you'd be sitting at around 23 Bitcoin or so, 22 to 23 Bitcoin. And again, this makes sense because if you're doing it during a bull market and the risk levels are just going up and up and up, then um, it's better to just get your get your money into the market. And then again, in 2017, you see the same thing. Instead of, you know, dynamically DCAing would have been worth around six Bitcoin present day. 
doing it statically around uh, six point, a little over six and a half Bitcoin at present day. So not a huge difference. Um, and you know, if if the lengthening cycle theory is true, which I promote on the channel, then we're likely just in an accumulation year throughout 2020. It's still possible that the dynamic DCA approach, um, you know, ultimately ultimately takes over and um, and outpaces the static. But we're not sure yet. I mean, you can see had you been um, uh, doing it in, in 2018, you would have, you know, you would have had basically double the amount of Bitcoin uh, had you been doing it statically. But dynamic DCA definitely closed this gap throughout the bear market of 2018 and, and is, is not too far away from it um, as we as we see it sit in, in 2020. Um, so this is essentially getting investing in a bull market. And it's hard to know you're in a bull market um, until it's been, you know, until it's been a little while and you can look back and say, oh yeah, we were in a bull market. Um, we know right now at present day, Bitcoin is above the 20 week and we've also had a golden cross. So we know there's a chance that the bull market could be getting started and it could be a multi-year bull market. Um, on the other hand, there's a chance that we break the 20 week moving average. Altcoins bleed with respect to fiat and Bitcoin. Bitcoin goes down too, but not quite as bad as other coins. And we kick the can down the road and maybe start our bull market next year or six months from now. We don't know. Um, but the goal of the dynamic DCA approach is to do it systematically over a long period of time so that so that you can so that you can take advantage of the times when the risk drops. In 2018, had you started this approach in 2018, you can see you would have put in um, around twenty seven thousand dollars at present day using both approaches and you would have owned more using the dynamic DCA approach, obviously, because um, the risk levels were fairly low in 2018, and you would have been putting more in when the risks dropped down to like 0.1 to 0.2 area. Uh, so you can see the, the difference in Bitcoin there. In 2019, again, the same thing. It, by investing dynamically, you know, you would, have, you would have been really picking up a lot of Bitcoin early on, and then um, ultimately would have leveled off and then by today, you would have accumulated over two Bitcoin dynamically and statically. You would have had less than two Bitcoin. Finally, even in 2020, had you just started this approach. And, and by the way, I published this approach in 2019. But for those who have been wondering, a lot of people have been saying, well, you know, is it better? How do I know it's better? Well, even if you had started it just a few months ago, which was several months after I published the risk metric, um, you would actually own more Bitcoin today doing it dynamically, even though you would have put in the same amount of money, you could have, you know, you would have put in maybe around $3,600 or so over the course of this, over the course of the last five or six months or, or since the beginning, um, the last five months, since the beginning of, of 2020, um, you would have accumulated around 0.48 Bitcoin as opposed to 0.46. And you can see that as we march through time, the amount of Bitcoin that your money can buy you is getting lower and lower and lower. And this may be discouraging for a lot of people to see that back in 2013, you could have been getting you know dozens of bitcoin a month um but another key thing to consider is if this trend continues for another market cycle then these values will be the the amount of bitcoin that people are going to be wishing they could have accumulated in say 2025 when maybe the price of bitcoin is is 40 or fifty thousand dollars after a blow-off speculative bubble top in say 2023 plus or minus six or eight months um so again it's all about perspective it's all about percent change a lot of the people who bought in 2011, 2013 are, you know, probably sold their Bitcoin along the way. It's not like most people are just holding their Bitcoin forever. Um, so remember, hindsight's 2020. But the best thing you can do is to get a plan now and stick to it. And it's fine if the static DCA approach is what you want to do. Um, it, and especially you could you could still do a static DCA using the risk metric so that you just don't put in more money when the risk is going through the roof and the price of Bitcoin is going through the roof. Um, you could still follow that approach if you're if you're worried about getting your money into the market um, or if you if you just want to do the dynamic DCA and allow yourself to have capital on the sidelines in the event that the risk drops, then this could be the approach for you. And the idea is you know, there's a risk to holding Bitcoin. There's a risk to not holding Bitcoin. There's a risk to not having capital on the sidelines that you could quickly get into the market if the price of Bitcoin drops in the short term. Because we know the price that Bitcoin will crash. It, again, it's what happens between crashes that's important. Um, 
we're going to see 30% drops. We're going to see 40% drops. We're going to, we might even see another 80% drop over the course of a few weeks after a speculative bubble. We know these things are likely going to happen in the future. It's can you capitalize on it in the, in the, in the, in the meantime. Now, in the same way that you're dynamically or statically dynamic, statically or, or dynamically averaging in, you would also average out of the market as well. So you take profits on the way up uh, in, the, in the sense that you, you admit to yourself that I don't know where the speculative bubble top is, but I'm going to ensure that I'm going to have a better life tomorrow because I invested for years and years and years. The prices are three or four X higher than what they are now. So I'm going to start taking profits on a, on a schedule based on, say, the risk metric or whatever metric you want to use so that I know that even if there is a 70% retracement, I was taking profits. So this is the point. Um, if we if we summarize uh, this video in a sense, I, I just want to show you the you know the different years. So static DCA versus dynamic DCA, you can see the differences in how much you would have accumulated. Again, 2016 and 2017 being the only two years where static DCA would have been better so far. We know that I mean if 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 we're in another accumulation phase for another you know 18 months and the price of Bitcoin goes back down to say five fifty five hundred dollars and stays there for six months, then dynamic DCA will likely be outpacing static DCA for those people who had it sitting on the sidelines. So you have to, you know, in terms of the FOMO into the market, you have to think a little bit more rationally. You don't try to remove the emotion from it. Just figure out what your risk tolerance is. Can you risk having the money sitting on the sideline? If you can't, if you just want to get into the market, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. There's several people there's tons of people that do that. In fact, more people do that probably than do the dynamic DCA approach. But the point is if you can do the dynamic DCA approach during an accumulation phase slash bear market, then every year it would have worked out except for 2016 and 2017 when we had the bull market. And in 2013, you can see that even had you done it then, dynamic DCA would have went out in the long term. You would have had one more Bitcoin. Um, Today. I mean, what's one, one Bitcoin among friends, but you would have had one, you would have had one more Bitcoin today had you done it dynamically, even though you would have been even though you would have been accumulating dozens of more Bitcoin back then doing static DCA, the dynamic way would have worked out in the long term. If you look at the difference in the number of Bitcoin you would have accumulated using these two approaches, so if it's positive means dynamic DCA, you would have had that much more Bitcoin. So starting in 2011, 16, 26, and 7, 26, 1, 18, 16. Negative 3, negative 0 0.84, 0 0.46, 0 0.3, 0 0.027. These numbers are going down just because the valuation of Bitcoin is going higher. So you, it's harder to accumulate um, as much Bitcoin as well as the fact that, you know, you would have been accumulating for longer had you started earlier on. Uh, so if, you, if you're looking at a long term per perspective, um, you know, there's only two years where this would have worked out, and this is just the short term. There's a good chance that these numbers will become positive as we continue on through the market cycle. So the evidence to me, and this is why I talk about dynamic DCA all the time, the evidence to me seems to suggest that dynamic DCA is the better approach. It allows you to accumulate more Bitcoin if you can stick to it systematically over a long period of time. If you can't do that, and if you put money into the market, and then the price of Bitcoin goes up in the short term, and then you, you get you get frustrated, then you throw that money in, and then the price drops, and then you don't have the money sitting on the sidelines to buy the Bitcoin at the low price, then if, if that's you, then maybe you should do it statically or do lump sum. Again, this is not financial advice. This is looking at the markets from a mathematical data science perspective and just letting the numbers do the talking. The valuation by the way, of this Bitcoin at $9,000 per Bitcoin, the, the difference in what you would have had doing it dynamically versus statically in 2011 is $14 million. 2012, $6.5 million. 2013, 9000 2014. And this is at present value. Present value. If this is the total number of you would have accumulated by today. 2014, 162000 2015, 144000 2016, um, looks like I placed the comma in the wrong spot, but negative 27000 uh, 2017, um, negative 7.5 thousand. 2018, positive 4 thousand. 2019, 2700. 2020, 243. But, I mean, 243, what's 243 among friends, right? So, I hope you guys enjoyed the content. Uh, please check out, or please subscribe to the channel if you guys like the content. 
check out the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com. If you like this approach to cryptocurrency, you want to follow the risk metric live, we have a dashboard on Google Sheets that you can access. And you can use that to weight your buys and sells every single week if you want. Um, you also get premium videos, you get um, premium report every single week using, um, and we have it in those reports, each week we have a special topic. So for instance, this last week, we looked at statistically speaking, what is the best hour to buy Bitcoin? Where, where would you not want to be buying Bitcoin on average? Like, have you ever bought Bitcoin and then it seems like over the next five hours, the price just usually goes down? Well, we look, we look at that. We look at the last several years and, and try to identify the time of day that ends up usually being better in the short term. Um, and then we also look, we've also had a report on the best day in general, the best day of the week to buy Bitcoin, as well as Ethereum. We've looked at a lot of other things. We're going to be continue going through these special topics as we continue marching on through the market cycle. If you want to be here for the journey and you want to just slowly learn a lot about the cryptocurrency markets, learn what's going on behind the scenes in terms of the data, what the data is saying, and even suggest something that you would like to see. You can, you can make a feature request or you can put a proposal in. And then if there's enough people that want to see that, then I'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll make that the weekly report. So if, if that interests you, then check out my website, intothecryptoverse.com. If you want a discount, you can pay with cryptocurrency. I would love to have you there. Uh, again, subscribe to the channel if, if you just want to be updated on future videos. And if you want to come talk about these charts, check out my Telegram channel. We have 3,400 people. It's obviously free to join uh, into, it's into Cryptoverse. Um, so check that out and I'll, I'll see you there. Uh, I'm, I'm, in, I'm fairly active in the group. Uh, so if you have any questions, you can always ask them there. And there's uh, 3,400 of your closest cryptocurrency friends that will, that will be there to help you. So that'll wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please subscribe, turn your notifications on, give the video a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time.